Okay, so I've just loaded up this uh, MuCat 2 scan of a tooth. Uh, you can see it here. And this is the standard view in Drishti, more or less. Um, you've got the 2D transform over here, which I'll come on to later. And the color of the transform is shown below, where these color of these dots represent the color, and the height represents transparency. So if I move this down, uh, we should become a little bit transparent and a bit see-through. Okay, so we'll, we'll we'll keep that up high for now. And I can obviously change the color of these if I double. Actually, I find a triple click seems to work more reliable. Uh, I can change the color of these uh, to whatever I want. Let's get these looking a little more reasonable again. Uh, perhaps have that one there. And we'll brighten this one up a bit. Okay, something like that will do. Uh, that's perhaps a bit too too far off. Try and get something that looks vaguely toothy, perhaps a little bit too yellow. Probably looks like mine. That's fine. Okay. Now I am in high resolution mode at the moment. Um, so yeah, that will be the standard view when you come in. Press F2 to come into high resolution. And press 1 for lighting. Uh, B to get rid of the bounding box. And the question mark to get rid of the text. And if I just middle click and zoom in a bit, um, that's fine. So there's my tooth. Um, now to make life a bit easier, simpler to understand I'm going to switch to 1D histogram for now because that makes far more sense and you can see my grayscale histogram here where we've got the grayscale on the x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis so most of this is empty space this tooth is actually in 70% ethanol solution so that's why it's not quite at zero and so the first thing I'm going to do is just move this transfer function away from that so that we're not showing, make sure we're not showing any of that solution. That's cleaned it up a little bit. Okay, uh, so there's my tooth. And this is the 70% ethanol solution here. This is dentine and this is enamel. Now enamel is the most mineralized part and it's got roughly twice the linear attenuation coefficient of the dentine down here. So that's why we get these very distinct peaks. And the MUCAT2 scanner this isn't one of our very long scans, but it's a fairly um, high contrast scan, which means we get good signal to noise ratio and a fairly good separation of the peaks. Okay, so what can I do with this? Well, I've shown you how I can change the transparency and change the color. I can change the range of it as well. Now, this is still operating in 2D mode. I'll come on to what that means later, even though we're only showing a 1D histogram. So that's why I'm keeping these lines vertical. This represents the extent of the transfer function. So it's not covering the ethanol. If I go out here, for example, uh, you see you get the whole containment. So we'll move that back. Something like that, keeping it roughly vertical for the time being. So I'm covering dentine, I'm covering enamel. So what I'm going to do now is narrow this down. So just again, just showing the whole whole thing. Keeping these roughly vertical. I seem to have bent this a bit. Let's uh, try and move it over a bit. better. Now if I slide this over to the right by middle finger dragging this uh, whole thing over, sorry middle button dragging, um, I'm now covering just the enamel only. So besides these few bits of impurities here probably, 
we are now just seeing the enamel and we can look inside that zoom in that's great so that's a fairly useful view now what I want to do um, is I'm going to add another transfer function to try and show the dentine so let's turn this off for a moment everything's going to disappear and I'm going to click a new one now this comes up with this black and white transform by default which personally doesn't do a lot for me and again it's it's not they're not parallel so we'll straighten this up first of all because we are working in 1D mode and let's change the colors uh, what should we have today for dentine let's go for something really hideous uh, it's kind of a purpley color that's, that's actually that's really revolting I'm going to regret this so I'm going to do that roughly the same for all of them so there's my hideous purpley pink dentine color um, now next thing we got it whoops that wasn't supposed to happen just right click so if you don't click right in the center of these if you miss them you will add another point just right click to get rid of it uh, let's now center this over dentine so we'll narrow it down first and now I'm going to exclude the enamel so just see dentine that's what I'm hoping uh, except it hasn't worked uh, what you're seeing is you can see the dentine nicely I can make this a little bit more transparent and we've still got enamel visible here but you can see with the transparency down uh, that you're getting this sort of shell of enamel over the top of the dentine I can still see that now that's a very useful image sometimes if you want to show the dentine uh, but also show the outline of the enamel that, that's great but that's not always what I want to do what I really want to do in this case is I just want to see what the dentine looks like so let's turn this up again make it opaque um, now why is this happening well quite simply um, th this is a logarithmic scale so we're, we're not seeing everything down here all the fine detail um, what happens is these voxels on the edge of enamel they're half if you think of them as being half enamel and half in this case 70 percent ethanol that combination has the same gray level when mixed together as the dentine so it's this um, partial volume effect that is giving me this outer skin and there's no way with one-dimensional transfer functions that I can get rid of it so this is where Ajay's 2D transfer functions come to the rescue so let's go to 2D mode now and now my histogram looks like this this time on the x-axis I've got grayscale intensity on the y-axis I've got grayscale gradient so that's looking at the uh, change in gray level with respect to the surrounding uh, voxels uh, how fast is it changing what, what's the gradient at that point and the intensity uh, or sorry the frequency is represented by intensity now so what you can see here these peaks here correspond the uh, peaks in intensity correspond to the vertical peaks in my 1D histogram so we've got enamel dentine solution and those are still here enamel dentine solution these represent bulk volume so this is enamel surrounded by enamel because there's no change the gradient is low there if all the surrounding voxels are the same then I'm going to be low on the y-axis this is bulk dentine this is bulk solution now what happens when I move say from enamel through to solution as I transition there 
I go through this intermediate space, this partial volume effect, where I've got the same grey level as I have dentine. But at this point, the gradient is very high because some of the voxels are enamel, um, surrounding ones are enamel, and some of the surrounding ones are solution. So I follow this trajectory up here. So this is bulk enamel. As I move into solution, I follow this pathway down here when I'm finally in bulk solution. So if I start inside enamel and move outwards, I'm following this trajectory. Now, similarly in dentine, if I start in bulk dentine and I move through to solution, I'm following this trajectory. This is bulk dentine here, this is bulk solution, and I follow this trajectory here. If I'm in bulk enamel and I move into bulk dentine, then I follow this trajectory here. And this is really nice because now I can separate these out. So what I'm now going to do is a bit of magic, which is to reshape my transfer function. And I'm going to go for something roughly semicircular just to follow this pattern, roughly. Okay, let's move that out. Something like that. And this is where the magic's going to happen. I'm now going to just drop that down below the enamel, uh, the bulk enamel to bulk solution pathway. And if I bring that down there, lo and behold, the enamel skin has gone. And I got a perfect image of dentine. It would look a lot better uh, in a less hideous colour. Let's maybe uh, brighten that up a little bit. Okay, let's go for something perhaps a little more reasonable. OK, so there's my image of dentine. Turn that one off. And I get my image of enamel. I'll put them both together. And there's my tooth. Perfectly rendered. But I've got separate transfer functions now uh, for the enamel and the dentine. And one more time, there's the, there's the dentine image. So that is the beauty of 2D transfer functions. They're absolutely brilliant uh, once you get used to them.